Hello, this is the first video in a playlist that I'm calling General Linear Models Design of Experiments. And this video is an introduction to different models that we use in design of experiments. And sort of as a reminder, we want, there's a group index, we we'll call it I, or some people think of it as treatment. And the goal is to test, is there a treatment effect? You know, is one treatment better than the other? Or are they all the same? And then within each treatment or each group, and I'll probably call it group more than treatment, there's a subject or more accurate, probably should say observation. So there's observations within each group. And the IJ index is what we're going to use. Now what we looked at in multiple regression in the playlist general linear models multiple regression we had what's called indicator variables so if we had treatments a b and c we had to use two indicator variables sometimes called dummy variables to model the effect of a b and c the treatments a b and c and we did it like this so the each observation there's a you know an intercept there's, you know, if it's treatment A, this is a 1 and that's a 0. And if it's treatment B, this is a 0 and this is a 1. And if it's treatment C, they're both 0, so the effect is just beta 0. And this is, and we're going to explore this further as we go into this series. There's what's called a means model. So each observation has an overall treatment effect and then it fluctuates within that treatment. So if treatment A has a has a mean effect of 5 and then there's variance within that and then say treatment B has a mean effect of 10 and then they fluctuate within that that's it's called the means model the effects model is that we assume there's some overall grand mean of all of our observations and then there's a treatment effect associated with each index I each group and then, of course, it fluctuates within that. Now, the treatment, since this is the mean, then one of the groups will be less than the mean, the treatment effect. And so these tau's that will be negative for any group that's less than the grand mean, and they'll be positive for any you know, treatment group that has an effect greater than the grand mean. So really, it represents you know, shifts from the response, or, you know, mu. Now, the assumptions for these models, and the assumptions you know, are on the epsilons because these are fixed constants or parameters. The standard assumptions is that the epsilons are uncorrelated, mean zero, and variance sigma squared. Now, the normal assumptions are actually the standard assumptions, but we assume that they follow a normal distribution. And we need this when we start doing confidence intervals and hypothesis tests and etc. Now, the matrix form for these models is this. In, in, in actually all of them, it's this form right here. And so the y vector is, is pretty simple. It's just the y observations. And we group them, you know, say treatment A, treatment B, and treatment C. So here, we're assuming two observations in group A, two observations in group B, two observations in group C. And this is the same no matter what model we use. The error terms is going to be the same. It's going to be a vector of errors. And it's really this design matrix and the beta parameters are different. <coughs> and so in the multiple linear regression model, this is it. So the first observation, and remember you, you multiply it like this. So we're in group A. So when you do that multiplication, this drops off and it's beta 0 and beta 1. <coughs> and if we look at what we did, if we're in treatment A, that's a 1 and this is a 0. So we just get beta 0 and beta 1. And that's what we get when we do that multiplication. And then for each, so the second observation in treatment, you know, group A, it's the same. And then for treatment B, we have to shift the 1 over. Because when we multiply it up, we want this. And treatment C, they're both 0, but we still have the beta 0. Um, one important aspect is that this design matrix has a rank of 3. 
And also another little subtlety is there's only ones and zeros in here. There's no numbers. Like when we were doing multiple regression, the design matrix had actual numbers in it. But this is a trait that you'll see that when in design of experiments, the design matrix has all zeros and ones. So the means model is this. And so for observation one, you know, in treatment A, when we multiply this up, we get, you know, it's just this mean, the same, because we're still in treatment A. And then when we and when this observation goes to group B or group two, then this multiplication isolates this. And then when we get to C, it isolates this. Now, these are the unknown parameters, you know, the group means. And that's why it's a means model. So each one of these represents the group mean. But look at the design matrix. This is a rank three matrix. Now the effects model is where we model the, the, some sort of overall, you know, group mean, you know, the overall grand mean, and then there's shifts from the grand mean in whether you're group A, group B, or C. And this is design matrix, right? So for in, the first two are observation or group A. So when you do this multiplication, these drop out and we're left with just these. Group B, you know, isolates mu and, and tau two. Group C is, is mu and tau 3 you can, when you do that multiplication. But notice here that if we add columns 2, 3, and 4, that equals column 1. So this 6 by 4 matrix is of rank 3, okay, which is also going to be very important in a second. Now also notice the design matrices only have zeros and 1s. And the goal is to estimate this beta parameter. Remember, the beta generically is this. Now, in the uh, multiple linear regression model, the beta parameters, we call them beta 0, beta 1, and beta 2. But in the means model, we call this beta vector mu 1, mu 2, and mu 3. And in the effects model, we the beta vector is mu, tau 1, tau 2, tau 3. So this beta vector, you know, is can represent different things. But this, in multiple linear regression, this was the um, formula for the least squares estimate for beta. Okay? But let's think about this. This right here is a 3, or a 6 by 3 matrix, rank 3. So then the transpose makes it 3 by 6, and that's 6 by 3. So x transpose x is 3 by 3, and it has a rank of 3, right? The rank of x is actually the same as the rank of x transpose x. So this is a 3 by 3 matrix, rank 3, so it's invertible. And then this makes sense. But in the effects model, this is a 6 by 4 of rank 3. So this matrix here ends up being a 4x4 four four matrix of rank 3, so it's not invertible. And so we have to use what's called a generalized inverse to come up with an estimate for our beta parameters. And in this case, it's the, you know, the mu, the tau's. Now, part of your homework for the next video is to go into my general linear models background video and find the four or five videos that deal with the generalized inverse and watch those. Uh, the generalized inverse is not unique, but it turns out that this formulation of it is unique and we'll cover all that in great detail. Another aspect that we're going to cover in, in great detail, or at least I think so, you know, four or five videos worth, is estimability. Now when, this, this, when x transpose x is invertible, then it turns out that every one of these beta parameters individually are estimable. But when you have a generalized inverse in the formula, it turns out you can't estimate individual beta parameters, but you can still estimate certain linear combinations of these beta parameters. And so estimability becomes a super important topic in design of experiments. So we will, um, focus on that. And all background material will either be covered in this playlist, Design of Experiments, or be referenced back into the General Linear Models background 
playlist and I'll make sure that you have access to every video because we're going to try to prove everything that we do in this video. Now some problems that we're interested in is determine whether there's an overall treatment effect. You know, is there a mean response the same for all three groups or is one of them better than another? We want to estimate the mean response within each group. So if we're in the multiple linear regression model where we use dummy variables or indicator variables, the group one effect is beta one plus beta two. This is the group two effect and the group 3 effect is just beta 0. Now if we're in the means model, the overall group 1 effect is mu 1 and mu 2 is for group 2 and mu 3. The, in the effects model, the mean effect is mu plus tau, mu plus tau 2, mu plus tau 3. Um, so one last note is, and I referenced it earlier, you know, if the, des if the x or the design matrix x consists of all zeros and ones, then the model is referred to as an analysis of variance model, or more commonly ANOVA, so A-N-O-V-A, ANOVA model. Well, that's all I have for this video. Be patient with me. I'll try to get out a video every, you know, week, and we'll just go through until the end. Hope you enjoyed it. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.